Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Did you understand what our brother David said? Yeah. Did you understand what Alicia, our sister Alicia said? Yes. Yeah. And that's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> Just sit down now. <laughs> I thought I so appreciate your sharing. And um, what can I add? What can I add? I'm just very grateful for the opportunity to journey with the SSPSA community to general conference. I have the privilege to be an observer, meaning that I didn't have the responsibility of voting. I didn't have the responsibility of leading or coordinating anything. I just needed to be there. I sang, I shouted, and I wept. In fact, I was weeping so much, crying so much, that you know those bags under your eyes and you weep a lot? <laughs> well, I had plenty of those, and I thought, oh my god, how am I going to face the world? <laughs> no ice, no sleep. Anyway, I, I wept. And I wept for the pain of our LGBTQI siblings and what they were going through. I wept for those who are outside the church who are LGBTQIA, families, friends, people. And I wept, I wept for my church. I wept for the churches that I've been in, the churches that are so fearful, and so fearful of homophobia, well, we could say homophobia, but so fearful that by not interpreting the scripture literally, they feel like their faith is in jeopardy. I weep for our lack of theology and our theological understanding. What have we done in our churches? Yesterday I went to the general conference, not general conference, annual conference. Thank God, not another general conference. <laughs> and this was my first time at a general conference and Probably my last. We'll see. <laughs> but the annual conference where the bishop, Bishop Bickerton, um, was, I think, sharing his heart and a heart of brokenness. And uh, I appreciate his authenticity and I appreciate what he had to share. He said that in 41 years of ministry, he has never witnessed anything like this in terms of how his response to what happened and to what happened to the church. And it was, for me, what came out to me from that was the church is in wilderness. We are not just personally in a wilderness, but communally we are in a wilderness. And, um, and I also, you know, in that wilderness, and I, I, I hope, wilderness is a scary place in our imagination. Wilderness could be something that we, our, our provisions, our security, our direction are in jeopardy. We don't know where to go. We don't know where food's going to come from. We don't know who's going to protect us from the wild animals or whatever is in the wilderness. And yet, I think there's a gift in the wilderness. And as some of you have written in your wilderness devotions this week, I just so appreciate those. And let me tell you, SPSA, you folks, you write the best devotions. <laughs> are so thoughtful and help us to get so deeply into what we need to, to get into. And so thank you. I, I have read those and have been nourished. 
but the gifts that come from being in wilderness, the gifts of knowing that none of the things that you think can hold you will now hold you. And the only thing you have left is to lean onto God. You know, I was so touched when um, some of you may know Hannah, uh, Pastor Hannah, Reverend Hannah Adair Bonner. She um, is uh, Wesleyan uh, student work, Wesleyan student work. And she wrote a blog where the title is, We Begged the Church, the United Methodist Church, to Love Us. They said no. And, you know, I was so moved by that. Because isn't that exactly what happened? Yeah. To put it starkly, this is not about theology. This is not about how we interpret the Bible. This is about love. And so, you know, when we realize and become honest in what the issues are, honest in what is keeping us from love of God and love of neighbor, I think that is the first thing. That is the first place we need to get at. And the gifts of wilderness can be that tearing down of those kind of things that keep us from God, that keep us from one another, that keep us from living out the greatest commandment. And in the wilderness, as we see in the scripture stories, it's not just going through the lonesome valley as we've sung. And Jesus did not walk it by himself as the traditional way that is sung. But the spirit is there. And story after story from the Hebrew scriptures, you can see in the wilderness, God did miracles. God provided manna. God was the cloud that kept them safe at night. Or it was a fire, I think, right? <laughs> Cloud by day, fire by night, right? That led them through the wilderness as they were being, uh, as they were leaving Egypt in, in that Exodus story. We have so many stories of God's presence with God's people in the wilderness. So the wilderness is not bad. It's a good place. It's a good place for us because God is there. And I must imagine, too, that the wilderness, when the, the, the people of Israel were coming out of that wilderness, didn't they have children with them? What do you think children did in the wilderness? Play. I think they would play. Wouldn't they play? Wouldn't they play? And so, so I think this gave me another kind of thought. In the wilderness, God is there. In the wilderness, let's not forget that we need to play. We are all God's children, and we need to pivot also to creativity, to play, to being in community, to being with each other in this kind of playful way because we're not going to survive if we don't allow our children, allow ourselves to also play. Why do I say that? Because playing, I think, is a picture of the kingdom of God. You know, when I look at, uh, do you remember three weeks ago, I think? We were all in a circle, you know, singing at the end of the service, and out of nowhere, I was deeply singing, right? And um, out of nowhere, there was a parachute that came up, right? <laughs> and these, these young people, you know, and Charlene too, <laughs> were waving. <Yeah. laughs> she is young, yes. <laughs> Charlene, that's young. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, my heart too. <laughs> children who were going in there playing under that tent. You know? And I looked at that and I thought, oh my gosh, that's the 
picture of the church. That's the picture of what the church ought to be. The kingdom of God, where all can come in to play under the wideness of God's tent. The tent that lifts up, that the, the, you know, the, how it mysteriously go up for the children, how it mysteriously go up and come down, and they're trying to catch it, you know? And that image really caught me and say, even in the midst of wilderness, there are parachutes. God is holding that tent, that parachute, that forms that tent under which we can play, under which we can become church, under which we can become the kingdom of God, where all can enter. So what are our resources? God is with us. Lean into God. Lean into community. Lean into creativity, play, and letting the children